Overnight, the world faced a catastrophic shutdown of all water and electricity, with temperatures plummeting by a staggering 100 degrees. While everyone else braved the extreme cold outside, I found solace at home, playing games by the fireplace. As my neighbors stepped out to complain about the dire situation, it became clear that without proper preparation, people were at risk of freezing to death or starving. Luckily, I had hoarded an abundance of supplies in my house, enough to last for years. When the girl I'd been crushing on for 18 years boldly asked me for food, I shamelessly sent her a picture of steak and wine, which she recognized as top-grade Wagyu and a $100,000 bottle of wine. She expressed her desire for the same, but I chuckled at the idea of her fetching it herself. Unexpectedly, a supernova explosion triggered a global ice age, and my role as a warehouse manager allowed me to secure enough provisions to last through the crisis. However, the girl and a group of neighbors broke into my house, stealing all my food. In a desperate attempt to ration supplies, they resorted to cannibalism, with the girl admitting she tricked me into opening the door. All right folks, let's set our sights high today, our goal is 600 likes. Hit that like button and subscribe right now. In my despair, I wished for a new chance, and I found myself reborn one month before the global freeze. Determined to rectify past mistakes, I swore never to be a pushover again. My immediate goal was to hoard supplies and build a safe haven before disaster struck. But before I could act, a bright light transported me to a strange space, sparking a bold idea to bring an entire Walmart to ensure a lifetime of sustenance. As I pondered my next move, my hunger led me to the best restaurant in the city, where even a simple meal cost a fortune. To my surprise, the girl I'd admired for years appeared, accompanied by her girlfriend. They marveled at my apparent stroke of luck, unaware of my inner disdain for them. I wanted to kill them there and then for what they did in my past life but suppressing my resentment, I offered to take them shopping, planning to leverage their assistance in my survival efforts. You sure carry a lot, the girl observed as I filled two shopping carts. Who knew I'd be buying two full shopping carts and throwing them to the two free laborers? Free labor shouldn't go to waste. This left her girlfriend looking displeased. You're a big man, aren't you going to do any of the work? The girls complained. Upon hearing this, Fa Yeching hastily chuckled, I've done you a big favor today. You owe us a big meal. Inside, I coldly laughed. Of course, I'll have to treat you too well. When the extreme cold comes, not one of you will be able to run away. Just then, Auntie Lin from the neighborhood committee approached with her grandson, Little Shangy. You can't eat all this by yourself. How about sharing some with Auntie? She suggested. But when her two-year-old grandson started taking things from my shopping cart, I grabbed it back, explaining that I didn't even have enough for myself. The child began to cry, threatening me, but I remained firm. Dare to say that again, believe it or not, I'll slap you to death. Auntie Lynn intervened, scolding me for haggling with the child. Eventually, she offered to buy a box and transfer the money later, but I insisted on immediate payment or go to the market and buy it yourself. Back home, Yu Ching reminded me not to forget to treat them, and after sending them away, I stored all the purchased food in the alternate space. Next, I focused on building an impenetrable steel fortress with heating devices and medical supplies. In the midst of preparing for the impending ice age, I recognized the importance of acquiring firearms for my survival. With 30 days until the catastrophe, I focused on liquidating my assets quickly to gather funds. Money would be my ticket to obtaining whatever I needed. The next morning, I checked the freshness of the food in the alternate space, pleased to find it as pristine as when I bought it. Taking action, I contacted the best local restaurant and reserved 5,000 plates for a three-day banquet. Despite the hefty price tag of at least a million, with a deposit of 200,000 required up front, I didn't hesitate to transfer the amount. Next, I retrieved my property certificate and headed to the bank to mortgage it. In a post-apocalyptic world, money would lose its value, but for now, it was a means to an end. However, even with my savings combined, it wasn't enough to cover all my needs, including weapons and supplies. As I pondered my next move, a man in a suit approached me, perhaps offering a solution to my financial woes. Bro, do you need money? I was delighted, money is coming when I need it. The man in the suit quickly brought me to another man. The man didn't beat around the bush and asked how much I wanted to borrow, but the interest rate would be a bit high. Upon hearing this, I rubbed my hands together. It doesn't matter if the interest is high, the main thing is to raise the money as soon as possible. So, I mortgaged the house that I had just mortgaged in my Audi as well. After the transaction, both parties felt that they had made a good deal. I mortgaged a house worth 5 million and a car worth 300,000 for 4 million. In the end, I have to pay them 6 million back, but I also think they are really nice people just giving away money for me to spend. Then I came to the most famous security company in my previous life. A second generation rich guy spent $2 billion to build a top level safe house. As a result, that rich guy directly became the emperor in the apocalypse. 
At this time, a business manager came over and asked if I needed any help. I quickly walked up and expressed my idea, indicating that I wanted to build a safe house for the apocalypse. Hearing this, the business manager didn't say much and directly presented me with several plans for me to choose from. However, I was not satisfied with the plans above. Then I stated that the house should be reinforced with aviation materials, the balcony glass should use the highest strength bulletproof glass, and add an air filtration system and no blind spot monitoring system. The front door should be made of the same material as the bank's anti-theft door. And I asked the manager to find a way to get some guns. After seeing my requirements, the business manager was surprised. With these renovations and some weapons, this would be a fortress. The final plan required 8 million. After I paid the deposit, I asked them to start work immediately and said that the balance would be paid within three months. Next, I needed to get some weapons for self-defense. I called the owner of a hunting club and got a few sets of crossbows as weapons from him. Just then, the 500 tables of banquet I ordered also arrived in batches by truck. This attracted quite a few people from the neighborhood. This is the delivery truck from a five-star hotel. These several trucks of food would cost at least a million or so. After a while, the food for 5,000 plates filled my entire house. Without wasting any words, I put them all into the otherworldly space. With all these delicious foods plus the ingredients I had ordered before, I basically don't have to worry about food and clothing for the rest of my life. The next day, the security company's workers came to start building the safe house. This scene attracted quite a few neighbors' attention who ridiculed me, asking if I had taken the wrong medication. But I didn't care. When the end comes, you'll know who the real joke is. Then, I found a manager's show from the company, and I bought a part of the warehouse's supplies at twice the market price. Next is to transport these things home little by little. My recent hoarding activities also attracted the attention. Yu Cheng then asked if something was going to happen recently, even saying that she had been thinking about me lately. As for this fake concern from that woman, I didn't want to respond at all. This really pissed Yu Cheng off, this bootlicker, actually dares to ignore me. But she was still curious about my sudden hoarding. However, her best friend just scoffed, saying, if something big is happening, the country will definitely notify us. Just try your best to catch Xiang Yi. Half a month later, my safe house was successfully built. In order to ensure the employer's safety, the manager also installed the surveillance system on each floor. I was very satisfied with this. Next is to wait for my last batch of supplies to arrive. Soon, several trucks of drinking water arrived in succession. At this time, Uncle Yi from the same neighborhood looked curious. Little Xiang, what are you doing with all these barrels of water? Thinking that Uncle Yi was one of the few good people in my past life, I whispered, the weather this year is going to be very unusual. It's best to stock up on some supplies to prevent extreme cold as soon as possible. Upon hearing this, Uncle Yu was half skeptical, but seeing the serious look on my face, he believed it. In the following period, I tried my best to exchange all the money in my hands for various supplies. Three days before the advent of the extreme cold in days, I specifically went back to the warehouse and invited all my colleagues for a cup of tea. After they drank it, everyone fainted. In order to move the entire Walmart warehouse with peace of mind, I had already put sleeping pills in the tea in advance. After shutting down the surveillance equipment, to the warehouse and immediately put all the rows of goods into the otherworldly space. With the help of the otherworldly space, I quickly emptied the entire warehouse. Just then, a box in the corner caught my attention. When I opened it, it was the cold-resistant tech product that was stocked a few days ago. It was said to be able to withstand temperatures of minus 100 degrees. With these supplies, even if facing the coldest ice age, I have nothing to fear. To prevent exposure, I also directly gave myself a dose of sleeping pills and then laid down on my colleague and fell asleep. Two and a half hours later, I was awakened by my colleague. Boss, something crazy has happened. Our warehouse has been emptied. Hearing this, I pretended to be surprised and jumped up. What the hell? Then, looking at the empty warehouse, I pretended to be upset and said, What happened? How are all the supplies in the warehouse gone? At this time, the manager called inquiring about the loss of the warehouse supplies. Knowing that the whole warehouse was emptied all at once, the manager immediately cursed, How is this possible? Are you a mole stealing for yourself? I gave an awkward smile. Manager, what do you take me for? Besides, I'm not that capable. I think we better report to the higher department as soon as possible so as not to delay the investigation time. After hanging up the phone, I quickly comforted my colleagues. Everyone, don't be afraid. We who are upright are not afraid of crooked shadows. Soon, all the colleagues on duty and I were called to the police station for questioning, but nothing could be found out after the questioning. Then the cop told us not to leave Tianai City rashly in order to cooperate with the follow-up investigation. Soon, this incident made the news. 
In the city, no one could believe that hundreds of square meters of supplies disappeared without a trace in less than three hours. Just then, it suddenly started snowing heavily in the sky. I knew this was a prelude to the extreme cold, so I hurried home. Three days later, the shockwave from a supernova explosion swept across the globe, bringing about a devastating disaster to the entire planet. The temperature began to plummet overnight. Looking at the heavy snow outside the window, I remained calm. What was destined to come eventually came. But at this time, the homeowner group became lively. After all, it was the first time they saw such heavy snow in the South. I looked at all this with a calm face. Perhaps for many people, this might be the first time they saw snow, and it could also be the last. In my past life, the heavy snow lasted a full three months, and the temperature would get lower and lower, causing many people who had not stocked up on food in advance to freeze to death in this winter. On the second day of the extreme cold weather, the heavy snow at the entrance of the residential area had piled up to half a person's height. Even if people indoors turned the air conditioning to the maximum, they still shivered from the cold. But I, who have prepared various heating equipment in advance, was sleeping soundly. But just then, I was suddenly awakened by a ring of the phone. It was a call from the Fa Yu Ching. She asked cheerfully, Shangi, did you know about the temperature drop when you stocked up on supplies? You didn't even tell me, and now I'm freezing. Hearing this, I scoffed and directly hung up the phone. This pissed off Fa Yu Ching on the other side. This bootlicker dares to hang up on me. Then she shamelessly texted me asking for food. After reading it, I laughed. She still wants to treat me like a bootlicker, huh? I directly sent her a picture of steak with wine. Fa Yuching recognized at a glance that this was a top-tier Wagyu beef and a bottle of wine worth a hundred thousand. She immediately said that she also wanted to eat steak and drink wine. After hearing this, I laughed. If you want to eat, go buy it yourself at the supermarket. After seeing my message, Fa Yuching was furious, but after thinking about it, she calmed down. After all, she has to hook me, the fish. I was full and bored, so I started watching TV. Just then, the tablet monitoring the building suddenly made a noise. I saw Auntie Lin on the screen, solemnly saying, Everyone, don't panic and scramble for supplies. This extreme weather will last at most two or three days. Our neighborhood committee will help everyone through this. Rushing for supplies will only lead to price increases. If anyone dares to hoard supplies, I will report to the authorities. But just then, a voice sounded behind her. Auntie Lin, how can you determine that this heavy snow will not last long? You are blocking everyone from going out to buy things. Will you be responsible if something happens? Hearing this, the surrounding homeowners also echoed, If we don't hoard supplies now, will you be responsible if we run out of food later? Auntie Lin quickly stated that the neighborhood committee would take responsibility for this matter. Then she pointed at me and cursed, Shangi, don't stir up trouble here. This is an illegal act. But I didn't bother to deal with her and turned around to go back to my super safe house. A week passed quickly, but the heavy snow outside showed no signs of stopping. I was having fun at home as usual when suddenly a message came in on my phone. I saw Auntie Lynn in the group chat calling me out by name to go shovel snow. I didn't even think about it and directly refused her. With such heavy snow falling, we'd be shoveling slower than it's falling. Clearly, Auntie Lynn was just trying to pick a fight. This got her gnashing her teeth in anger. Then Auntie Lynn commanded in the name of the neighborhood committee, Shangi, you must go out and shovel snow. Whoever dares to leave an opposition will certainly be dealt with by the organization after the snow disaster ends. Seeing this, I said coldly, such a show of authority. Then I quickly typed a bunch of text and sent it out, how come I don't see you calling out the rich kids in the neighborhood? Just picking on us honest people, and Elin. Since you're so capable, why don't you go ask So Hao and Chen how to shovel the snow? Xin Jiang Hao is the boss of a construction project, he has hundreds of people under him, and Su Hao is a well-connected rich kid. In my past life, these two guys broke into my house and took all my food. Hearing what I said, other people also started making a commotion in the homeowner group. Shangi is right. If you dare, go ask them, they chimed in. Seeing the messages, Auntie Lin was immediately cursing. Clearly, my words made it hard for her to step down, so she could only grit her teeth and call out the two in the group to shovel snow together. Xin Jiang Hao, seeing the message, immediately started cursing, Are you crazy? I'll kill you if you bother me again. Su Hao also echoed, What a big idiot, taking the homeowner's money and acting high and mighty every day. Now you really think you're the boss? I didn't even bother to deal with those poor ghosts. Seeing this message, Auntie Lin was so angry that she didn't dare to say a word, but directly pointed the finger at me. Shangi, you're really trying to make trouble for me, aren't you? You'll be satisfied if no one goes out to shovel snow, won't you? I picked up my phone, turned on the voice message, and scoffed, Did you come to me to seek a sense of existence after being scolded by someone else? Believe it or not, if you talk any more nonsense, I'll kill you. 
Seeing my serious tone, Auntie Lin immediately backed down. Just then, a loud bang came from my front door. I heard Shin Jiang Hao outside yelling, Shangi, weren't you pretty cocky in the group chat just now? Believe it or not, I'll kill you. At these words, I picked up my crossbow and went to the door. It's not certain yet who's going to kill whom. I shot him directly through the shin with an arrow. Injured, Shin Jiang Hao fell to the ground, wailing incessantly. He never imagined that I, a seemingly honest person, would be so ruthless when I took action. Little did he know that this was only the first step of my revenge. With temperatures now at minus 100 degrees, Xin Jiang Hao's leg, which had been shot through, was surely not going to be saved if not treated in time. He could only die slowly in this freezing weather. Xin Jiang Hao, bearing the severe pain, staggered into the elevator. He could never have imagined, having only met me a few times, that I wanted to kill him directly. This realization made Xin Jiang Hao shudder with fear, so he immediately took out his phone and dialed the emergency number. However, the whole city was already covered in heavy snow, and the hospital's ambulance simply couldn't make it. Left with no choice, Xin Jiang Hao could only go home and treat his wound himself. Fortunately, the weather was freezing cold, and his foot was almost numb from the cold. With grim determination, Xin Jiang Hao pulled the arrow out. Then, he took out his phone again and made a threat in the homeowner group, Shang Yi, wait for me. Watch me kill you. Facing his threat, I naturally wasn't afraid and responded confidently, keep talking, and I'll disable your remaining leg. This scene stunned the onlookers in the group chat. After all, as the area tyrant, Jin Jiang Hao, this was the first time someone dared to confront him directly. Soon, he picked up the phone and summoned his hundreds of followers. In no time, a swarm of followers, each holding their own weapon, rushed over in grandeur. After learning about what had happened, the leading bald guy came to my door with his followers. You offended our bro. Today will be your death anniversary, he declared, slashing directly at the door. But the next second, his machete was flung away. This scared the gangsters out of their wits. How many people had this kid offended? His home was fortified stronger than a turtle shell. Watching the scene from my security camera, I laughed with disdain. Are you guys hungry? Try harder. Seeing the bunch outside the house swearing and fuming, I suddenly had an idea. Immediately, I took a water hose and connected it to the kitchen faucet. Why are you so angry? Let me cool you down, I taunted. The gangsters outside saw the door lock suddenly open and were instantly alert. Upon realizing it wasn't an arrow, they had a good laugh. Who would have thought that the next second the hose would spurt out cold water? Soon, a bunch of them fell to the ground frozen. Only three managed to escape. Seeing this scene, I was quite pleased. In this freezing weather, cold water is more lethal than any weapon. On the other side, the three little guys who escaped were huddled together, shivering. Xin Jiang Hao looked at them and yelled, what happened? How did you guys, a whole group, not manage to bring down a small brat? Hearing this, the three hastily explained, Shangi was too cunning. He turned the front door into a burglar-proof steel door. We chopped for a long time and only scratched some paint off. Then he sprayed us with cold water. Upon hearing this, Xin Jiang Hao's face immediately darkened. No wonder the door felt a bit hard just now. But don't worry, I don't believe this kid can hide in there forever. Send a few men to keep watch at his door day and night. When he dares to show his face, tear him into pieces. Little did he know, the food stored in my house, not to mention for a lifetime, even if it were for ten lifetimes, it wouldn't run out. On the other side, Uncle Yi was leading a few people to clear the snow from the entrance of the residential area, planning to dig a path to the supermarket to replenish food. However, they couldn't shovel as fast as the snow fell. After a while, they gave up and prepared to go back. Watching the scene, I sighed. Human power is simply no match for a disaster of this scale. Although the TV is actively reporting to reassure all citizens that the country is launching a final offensive against the snow disaster, only I know that 90% of all organisms globally will freeze to death in this snow disaster. My crush of 18 years was the first to send me a greeting. Shangi, are you okay? Seeing the message, I couldn't help but laugh. If it wasn't for her eating my most important part in my previous life, I would have still seen her as a pure lotus. So I replied indifferently, I'm fine. Yu Ching shamelessly asked me for something to eat, saying she would return the favor later. Faced with my crush's request, I agreed without hesitation, then sent her a picture of a lobster to whet her appetite, adding with a mocking tone, I'm already full. Seeing this, Yu Ching got angry and decided to kick me out of her pond. At this time, her best friend sent me a message. Why are you so dumb? Yu Ching is really angry right now. Seeing the message, I laughed again. They're really good at acting, one playing good cop, the other bad cop. Ah! Huh. The best friend didn't give up and continued, the snow would not last that long. Share few meals and seduce Yu Ching first. Wouldn't that be a big win? I ignored her disdainfully and simply responded with oh. 
This response infuriated her. How did this bootlicker suddenly become enlightened? Yu Ching could only sigh. Why did my attitude towards her undergo such a drastic 180 degree change? At this point, her best friend suggested, if we lose one bootlicker, so be it. Don't we still have others? Hearing this, Fang Yuching's eyes lit up, and she immediately called other bootlickers. Soon, Chapung hurried over with large and small bags of supplies, claiming that this was all the food he had left. Hearing this, Fang Yuching was touched and immediately sent him a good person card. Chapung, you're a really good person, she praised. Before Chapung could express his loyalty, her best friend promptly closed the door. In no time, three days had passed, but the heavy snow was still falling nonstop. Munching on a chicken leg and looking at the time on my phone, I thought, the real drama is about to begin. The next moment, the entire neighborhood plunged into darkness. Soon, neighbors began stepping out of their homes, asking each other whether they had electricity. Now, with water and electricity cut off and air conditioning no longer functioning, it was genuinely getting cold enough to kill. After finishing my chicken, I picked my teeth and then turned on a generator I had prepared in advance. I was fortunate to have died early in my past life, otherwise, I too would be freezing like the rest of them. At this moment, Auntie Lin from the neighborhood committee was shivering while holding her grandson. She never expected the snow to last so long. A message came into the neighborhood group chat, stating that this was a once in a hundred thousand years global blizzard, and we might be on the brink of a mass extinction event. Several major cities in the country had already been overrun. Everyone must stockpile more supplies. After reading the message, Auntie Lin was shocked. She never imagined the snow disaster would be this serious. At that moment, she hatched a plan. She must trick everyone into giving her their food before they received the news. So, Auntie Lin promptly posted a message in the owner's group, Everyone, don't worry. This disaster is temporary. Workers are currently repairing the water and power outage. The officials have issued an order. Due to these extraordinary circumstances, the neighborhood committee will conduct unified management of all property owners. Anyone who does not cooperate will be arrested and interrogated by the police. Upon seeing the message, Xin Jiang Hao began to curse in dissatisfaction. Although he had a lot of underlings, he dared not confront the police. Meanwhile, Auntie Lin continued in the group chat, due to the severe impact of the blizzard on everyone's lives, the neighborhood committee has decided to collect supplies from each owner and distribute them uniformly. On seeing the message, I couldn't help but laugh. It was the same old trick as in my previous life. Then, Auntie Lin sent me a private message, Little Shangy, you usually work in a warehouse and must have hoarded a lot of food, right? Besides, you bought three truckloads of stuff last time. Everyone is in trouble now, and it's your turn to do your part. After the crisis, we will certainly repay you. On hearing this, I chuckled coldly. You old hat, your hands were also dirty in my death in the previous life. Just you wait. I immediately replied with a voice message, that's great. I just ran out of supplies at home, Auntie Lin. When you collect the supplies, make sure you share some with me. Seeing my message almost made her explode. This kid had hoarded several truckloads of supplies. How could he possibly run out so soon? Realizing that she and her grandson were depending on my supplies, Auntie Lin swallowed her anger and kindly replied, Little Shangi, this is an order from the organization. You must comply. Once the snow disaster is over, I will definitely report your good deeds to the organization. On seeing her message, I laughed again. If I hadn't died early in my previous life, I might have believed her lies. So, I picked my teeth and replied, Auntie, I'm not lying to you. I really don't have anything to eat at home. Why don't you take the lead and send me a few packets of instant noodles first? Upon hearing this, Auntie Lin could no longer restrain herself and furiously retorted, Shangi, refusing to hand over your supplies is the same as opposing the organization. I will definitely report you to the organization for disciplinary action. I'm after you represent the organization. You're not even a civil servant, not to mention a public institution staff. Why don't you ascend to heaven? It's okay for you to show off normally, but now that things are like this, you still think you're so important, Andy Lin exclaimed, her anger palpable as she smashed her old-fashioned phone. This little brat dares to talk to me like that. After all, I'm a leader in the community. After failing to get any advantage from me, Andy Lin turned her attention to other homeowners, thinking, it doesn't matter who I can deceive, as long as I can deceive some. Two days quickly passed under Auntie Lin's coaxing, and quite a few homeowners had actually sent their supplies to her home. Looking at this scene, I sneered in my heart. What a bunch of fools, believing in some great Samaritan in this post-apocalyptic world. Now the whole world has plunged into chaos. Without enough supplies, they could only wait to die. Soon, many homeowners began to tag Auntie Lin in the group chat, demanding, wasn't it said that the supplies would be distributed evenly? We've run out of food at home. Start distributing some to us. But Auntie Lin merely scoffed at the messages. What a bunch of idiots. 
These supplies were obtained through my hard work. How could I possibly give them away so easily? Just then, her phone rang, and seeing that it was Xinjiang Hao, she broke out in a cold sweat. What does he want with me? On the other end of the line, Xinjiang Hao said coldly, Auntie Lin, you have quite a method. You've actually deceived everyone's supplies into your home. Hearing this, Auntie Lin feigned innocence, saying it was the arrangement of the community committee and she was just doing her duty. Xinjiang Hao laughed, that's perfect. Over ten of us here are waiting for you to distribute the supplies. Hearing this, Auntie Lin coughed lightly. These supplies haven't been sorted out yet. Some homeowners haven't handed in their supplies. We can't start distributing them yet, Auntie Lin protested, but the next second, the area tyrant Xinjiang Hao, along with his underlings, burst into her house. Seamus Auntie Lin's face turned pale. How dare you break into a civilian house? Is there no law anymore? She exclaimed. Xinjiang Hao responded with a slap. And you think you've been lawful, deceiving everyone's supplies? Today, I'll act in the name of justice. Meanwhile, I watched the scene on the surveillance, cheerfully eating a sausage. The dogfight was finally about to begin. At that moment, I had a brilliant idea. If watching alone is fun, sharing it with others would be even better. With a love for drama, I immediately posted the surveillance video in the homeowners group chat. Surely, everyone's reaction to this would be quite amusing. On the other side, Xinjiang Hao and his gang had already broken into Auntie Lin's house, instructing his subordinates to take away all the food, not leaving a single thing behind. Hearing this, Auntie Lin hurriedly clung to Xinjiang Hao's leg. You can't take everything. Some of the supplies here are what I hoarded myself. Without these supplies, how would my grandson and I survive? Xinjiang Hao let out a cold laugh. That's none of my business. Get out of here, he said, kicking Auntie Lin away. Her grandson, stunned by this scene, then picked up a small knife to avenge his grandmother. He managed to accurately stab one of the punks, a yellow-haired guy, in the butt. The severe pain made him forget about moving things, and he kicked the boy away in response. Witnessing this, the other thugs burst out laughing. Since when did yellow hair learn to kick? He actually managed to kick this little brat away. Despite the intense pain in his butt, yellow hair played along. How cool am I, right? Someone should have recorded that moment. Auntie Lin fell in front of her grandson, distraught by the chaos unfolding before her. Xinjiang Hao, watching the scene, showed no sympathy, instead, he sneered. This is what you get for deceiving us. Your neighbors were just dispensing justice. On the other side, many homeowners watching this scene also clapped and cheered. Ha ha ha, serves the big liar right. Such thunderous methods are necessary to deal with swindlers like her. Without bro, how would we be helpless against this kind of rogue? Seeing these messages, I laughed. You people really don't understand the crux of the problem. Today, Xinjiang Hao can break into Auntie Lin's house, tomorrow, he could break into yours. But all this has nothing to do with me. My two-meter fixed steel door wouldn't yield even if he came with a tank. Soon, Auntie Lin was pleading for help in the homeowner group. Does anyone have hemostatic drugs, anti-shock medications, and antibiotics? My grandson was injured by Xinjiang Hao. Dr. Zhou needs these medications urgently for surgery. Upon hearing this, my eyes lit up. Dr. Zhou was a savior-like figure in the previous world. Fortunately, we had neighborhood Dr. Zhou to save her grandson's life. At this point, Auntie Lin pleaded continuously in the homeowner group for medicine, promising to show gratitude to anyone willing to provide it. However, this only resulted in mockery for many homeowners, so you plan to count on a group doctor, show a kind-hearted beauty save your grandson. Why should we help you after deceiving us of our supplies? You still have the audacity to ask for help. Seeing this, I sighed. This was karma for Auntie Lin. Furthermore, the snowstorm had been going on for over a week, and the outside was practically paralyzed. Even if the boy was saved, how long could everyone last without food? At this point, the snow outside the community had almost buried up to the first floor. Many people had already heard from the news that this was a global snowstorm that occurs once every hundred thousand years. No one knew what the snow disaster would turn into. Soon, a week passed in a flash, and the whole world was almost buried in the snowstorm. In some cities in the north, the temperature had even dropped to negative 100 degrees Celsius. Many residents who tried to evacuate southwards ended up freezing to death on the road. In the homeowner group, Auntie Lynn began to play the morality card again. My dear grandson has been hungry for two days. He's just a child. Are you really going to stand by and watch him die? She stated that she was willing to pay a high price for supplies. Seeing this, the homeowner started to inflate the prices, and the last pack of instant noodles was even sold for $2,000. Seeing this, I laughed. These people are not taking the apocalypse seriously. In a little while, they'll think paper money is too hard even to use as toilet paper. 
as a second-generation rich kid with some business acumen, Su Hao started to hoard supplies at a high price. He was very clear that money in this apocalyptic world would become as useless as waste paper. He had to get rid of it while it was still useful. At this time, a single mother in the group sent out a plea for help, stating that she and her daughter were about to starve to death, hoping that everyone could help her. Seeing this, I laughed. In the past life, this woman and her daughter managed to survive for a long time. This situation is not as simple as she seems. Ten days passed quickly, and as usual, I was enjoying my time at home. At this moment, the phone on the table rang. Seeing the caller ID, I let out a cold laugh. This person finally couldn't stand it anymore. So I opened the video chat and sarcastically said, you all look thinner after not seeing each other for a while. Behind me, the sight of food made the two people drool. Why do you still have so much food in your house, Shangi? Is it because you hoarded it last time? And with this weather of negative 100 degrees, why are you sweating? Upon hearing this, I smiled. Oh, this? I installed a fireplace at home. This thing is very warm. I feel like going for a run outside. Upon hearing this, Yu Ching immediately tried to butter up to me. Brother Shangi, you're so awesome. You're so well prepared. Could you let Yu Ching come over and take a shower inside? I scoffed. Do they still take me for an old lecture? So, without a second thought, I rejected her invitation, even taunting her with, at negative 100 degrees, make sure to keep warm. Yu Ching was instantly infuriated at my words. Shangi, don't go too far. We are freezing and starving. It's fine if you don't help, but don't make sarcastic comments. Hearing this, I laughed. You still think I'm an easy target? If you want food, go find your rich kid. Besides, we're not really related, so why should I help you with that? I stylishly ended the video call. On the other side, Yu Ching was already furious. She never thought that I would be on the path of a bootlicker's counterattack. At this moment, her best friend chimed in with some fair words. Shangi is quite good. It's you who missed the opportunity. Otherwise, we could be enjoying the things at Shangi's house right now. He is much stronger than that so-called rich second generation. If I had known you would fail, I would have gone for it myself. Now everything has been revealed, and we end up with nothing. Yu Ching was already furious. Lin Kaining, you're still speaking in favor of Shangi? I'll kill you. Soon, the two were wrestling on the bed. Meanwhile, the government, seeing that they could no longer hide the news of the snow disaster, issued an announcement on television. In order to meet everyone's electricity needs, power supply would be provided from 1 to 2 o'clock every day, but the voltage would only be enough for low power appliances. Currently, all major power plants are shut down, and power is scarce. Everyone is encouraged to use electricity sparingly to prevent large-scale power outages. Soon, the homeowner group was lively again. Did you see the news? Turns out the rumors online are true. Just as everyone was on edge, suddenly, someone offered to sell instant noodles for 5,000 bucks a pack. Any takers? Seeing this, I didn't know whether to laugh or cry. Knowing that we're in an apocalypse yet still wanting to exchange life-saving supplies for this worthless paper under the current circumstances. Filling one's stomach is above all else. When everyone is hungry, who would care about this useless paper? On the other side, after wrestling for two minutes, Fa Yu Ching and her friend finally calmed down. Since the soft approach didn't work, we'll go hard with that. Yu Ching picked up her phone and contacted her number one bootlicker, telling a wild story about how Chang Yi wanted to tarnish her purity just because he had food. Cha Peng was instantly furious upon hearing this. This Chang Yi is such a scumbag. If I don't take this guy down, I'll be letting down my bootlegger identity, Cha Peng declared. Seeing Cha Peng was hooked, Fa Ye Ching immediately got close to him. Little Joe, let's find a way to take his house, and then we can live together, okay? Xiao Ping agreed without a second thought, but before that, they needed to prepare some weapons. In a short while, the three of them, each carrying a kitchen knife, arrived at my doorstep. Then Zhou Peng, hiding the knife behind his back, knocked on the door. Brother Shangi, are you in? It's old Joe. As colleagues, could you lend me some food? I'll trade you with fever medication. Unbeknownst to them, I had already seen the whole scene clearly through the surveillance camera. Seeing the weapons in their hands, I was ready to explode with anger. Do you guys really think you can kill me? If the tiger doesn't show its power, you'll mistake it for a sick cat. Then I picked up the hose, attached it to the tap, and decided to give them a chilling shower at negative temperature. At that moment, the piled up waste caught my attention, and an idea sprang to mind. I picked up the hose and approached the door, shouting, Don't worry, I'll make sure everyone gets enough to eat. The three of them, thinking that I was about to open the door, excitedly raised their weapons. But the next second, a pile of feces sprayed through the small window of the door onto them. Fa Yu Ching immediately realized it was a pile of feces and started to vomit on the side, while Cha Peng was furious. Shangi, if you have the guts, come out. I'll kill you. 
At this, I just laughed. Don't say I didn't give you a chance. If you have the guts, come in. Hearing this, Chopin, seething with rage, raised his kitchen knife and struck my front door, only to find that the door was unharmed. Instead, his hand was injured from the impact. Watching the scene, I couldn't help but laugh. My two-meter-thick security door isn't something you can break just by saying so.